Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. God created humans as free beings which means we can choose how we live. The evil in the world is often the result of bad decisions made by people who use their freedom and power to do harm instead of good. Human free will is the determinant of love and goodness or hatred and evil. Human understanding of values is often limited and God's plans will remain incomprehensible to us to a certain extent. From this perspective, what we perceive as evil may have a deeper, difficult to understand purpose in God's plan. Some theologians argue that evil is allowed by God as a test of faith or as a means for spiritual growth and perfection. Through suffering and difficulties, people can develop values like patience, perseverance and compassion. There is also a mystical and deeply real reason for the existence of evil in the world. This reason is Satan who opposes God and acts against humanity, striving to introduce confusion, suffering, and sin. Many theologians and believers, based on the Bible and numerous events, believe that Satan is still active in today's world, exploiting human weakness, injustice, sin, and suffering to separate people from God. He is perceived as a spiritual being influencing human thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, encouraging selfishness, hatred, envy, and other destructive emotions and actions. Indeed, in our daily lives, we often encounter various forms of evil, from minor injustices to great injustices. Regardless of how big or small the evil is, it can be overwhelming and evoke a sense of helplessness. Faced with these challenges, we often wonder how we can confront such immense adversities. Today, by delving into the words of the Revelation of St. John, we will remind ourselves of the powerful weapon we have at our disposal to overcome evil every day. And again, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. This heavenly declaration tells us that victory has already been achieved, not through our human efforts, but through God's actions. In our contemporary world, where cynicism and despair often prevail, remembering this unwavering truth is a source of hope. In the eighth chapter of the letter to the Romans, Apostle Paul comforts us. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This means that in every situation, even the most difficult one, we are not alone. St. John speaks of the blood of the Lamb. It is through the sacrifice of Christ, who shed his blood for us on the cross, that we have access to forgiveness and the strength to overcome evil every day. In daily life, this reminder can motivate us to forgive and act with love. As stated in the first chapter of the letter to the Ephesians, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Each of us can start the day anew 
with a clean slate, ready to live according to the gospel. How we live our lives can testify to the transforming power of Christ. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. As John writes, it is we who show the world who we truly are as followers of Christ. Every action, gesture and word of ours can be a testimony of a life in accordance with the gospel. It is in our testimony that lies the power to convince, inspire and transform. In the third chapter of the first letter of Peter, we are reminded, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. This is an encouragement for us to live in such a way that others, although they may initially turn away, will soon see in us the hope that Christ gives. Through our lives, words and deeds, we can be a light in the darkness. I encourage us all not to lose heart. Let each day become an opportunity to witness our faith, hope and love that are within us thanks to Christ. Let our lives be a living image of the victory that has already been won on the cross. In the face of evil, which seems so powerful, let our hearts and minds remember that we have the most powerful weapon, faith that through the blood of Christ and the power of our testimony, we can overcome any evil. May God bless us all.